So I'm going to quickly cover this chapter on history and geography. You'll find other videos that I think will be more interesting on culture and different cultures. I have a video on different cultures as well. Uh, it's a two-part series I think I'm, I, I made. And also a video on the world in 2050 that really shaped the importance of what's happening and how that's going to really project into the future, not just talk about now. So <clears throat> I'll cover a couple of things here and hopefully you'll find my other videos more interesting. So <clears throat> culture is and history are one and the same. Culture develops with time. Time is history. The different things, I'm not going to go into too much history here, that, that was cherry-picked in this book, but I find interesting, was the Opium Wars in China, as well as relations today still with uh, China and, and the West, not just the United States, but the West. Because um, uh, I, I don't know why they're saying here trade relations between U.S. and Asia, and yet the Opium Wars were between Britain and the French with China, so I would be mindful of that in its in its terms. But um, also cherry picked here would be Japan history. F check out these videos I have explains culture and history and how you can manage these situations when dealing with with different cultures. Cultures is more important, but Japan for me, what's fascinating is is a very highly um, it, Change in Japan isn't simple. It's always dramatic, and I think that's both ex exemplified by shogun feudal, sy feudal system to period of isolation to a period of massive um, 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 growth and domination to um, and quick turn to um, insulation and stagnation. So, truly fascinating culture. But for me, when you look at history, I think it is, I, I do agree, it is subjective. It is always in the eyes of the experienced. Uh, John F. Kennedy will say about Mexico and the United States, geography has made us neighbors, tradition has made us friends. But in Mexico, it's seen as geography has made us closer, tradition has made us farther apart. You cannot say that it has always been a good example or a good experience when somebody's taken a mass swath of your entire um, nation, lands of your nation. So, um, when it comes to U.S. foreign policy, these three elements matter the most and still affect the United States today and how we achieve our foreign policy. I'm not going to go into too many details, but Manifest Destiny is that the United States is on the um, other side of the Atlantic and everything on the other side of the Atlantic should be dealing with each other versus the other side. That Britain should not involve itself. Spain should not involve itself. Um, well, sorry, correction. That's the Monroe Doctrine. Manifest Destiny is this later thing that comes out under an idea that we can go from sea to shining sea. You see that in our music. But be careful. This is seen as imperialistic and on the outside, as glorified it is in our history. So once again, history is subjective here. Um, another important element when considering different cultures and how they're built is geography. Geography and proximity too. You know, here you see in the book talk about different elements, but let's talk about quickly neighbors. I found fascinating when I was living in Austria, from mountaintop to mountaintop, different villages had totally different dialects, almost as if it's a different language. And so geography, through eons of history, had always impacted um, culture, particularly in the sense of space from oceans and mountains, creating massive shifts and differences in culture. So. But also, you want to understand as an international marketer, these differences in cultures and differences in geography will affect how you enter that market greatly. You know, what, how are you going to get your product from, from your locate, uh, manufacturing location to its final consumers impacted by geography? New things to worry about in um, geography is the responsible um, environment. We are dealing with... Uh, 
global warming and glo climate change at a much more accelerated pace, and that's going to affect how we grow over the next 20, 30 years. And so that it is at the forefront. It is at the forefront of costs. Apparently, um, it costs $750 billion over the last five years um, in the United States alone. So it's going to cost us trillions if we continue down this path for the different displacement of millions of people. And uh, the changes of geopolitical politics will be affected by this. It already is affected by this. Also, resources will become more fought over if we do not have sustainable paths to grow and ensure that everybody grows. Check out my World in 2050 video. You'll find it interesting. Also, check out the United Nations Global Compact, how companies are working together to see how we can achieve these major issues of global warming, um, housing development, uh, and, uh, um, well, um, uh, getting people out of the poverty line, women's rights, all these are, are at the forefront and climate is affecting each one of them. So definitely check that out. And I'm not going to go into all these examples. Um, sources of energy will matter. It's going to affect your cost of business as well. It's going to affect how you sustain energy as well. In California, rolling blackouts are a result of going to sustainable energy that's not 24 hours cyclically secure. And so we have to find ways to create that energy sustainability. And, and as a manufacturer or, or a business, you will be affected by that. It's not just California. You'll find blackouts in other countries too. Pollution bothers me a lot um, quickly. You know, the clothes we make uses a lot of chemicals. So when you look at fast fashion companies, they have a responsibility for the chemicals they're pouring in different markets or different countries that they produce in and selling to countries like ours. And we, are, we have no idea what is really happening because they can get away with it or they think they can, at least unfortunately for now. Population is a huge um, factor to check out because in the video um, on my world projection in 2050 from PricewaterhouseCooper, you'll find that the population is still going to con continue to grow, but it's going to grow in different ways. Where in countries like the United States, it's slowing. In Japan, it's reversing. But you see in China, it will potentially reverse. And in Nigeria and, and Egypt, uh, you find very young populations that are growing fast. They make up the majority of the population. So will have huge impacts on, on business. Um, this is a sensitive topic. I'm surprised the book addresses calling it population control, I guess. Population control was the one-child policy in China. Very inhumane and, and, and um, should not have been allowed. Uh, but there are other ways where population control happens on its own naturally. And that comes from new rising incomes, uh, literacy, access to opportunities for women, healthcare, different forms and family structures will evolve and start to homogenize across the world. Uh, nutrition and value, longer expanding life, uh, life, lifespans will also affect these dynamics as well. Also rural versus urban will have an impact. More people will be in cities than there will be in, in rural areas. So look for that in, in rising economies there you can find great business opportunities population decline is happening and will continue to do so and will affect decision making um, particularly we talk about Europe and Japan but watch out for China it they're growing older before they get rich that's gonna have major major impacts a couple graphs of how it looks let's take a look at Japan developed in Japan you see it looks pretty thin up and down but back in, in other countries, um, you'll see that it's a little bit fatter and um, lower in younger ages. But look at Japan in 1950. Nice, clean, simple pyramid. Younger, more populous, young, older, less populous. By 2055, that is going to be a, much, a, a, a huge issue on the social systems that you have the a third a smaller third of the workforce I mean, the workforce shrinking that will be paying for all the things for the young and the old populations and that's the impact you face technology and communication will be a critical factor in how things globalize 
be on the watch out of how people are perceiving it, whether it's more freedoms or less freedoms. That's going to affect how you can communicate and, and do uh, business in different countries. And access ultimately is becoming more and more available. And that's a good thing. But like I said, the drawback being some countries are um, getting more and more stronger in their ability to control it. And that's, that's scary. So um, trade is also going to be um, continuing to be an issue. As you see now, we have trade issues through supply chain shortages and there's just a bottleneck that just keeps flowing around. But we're looking at a systems that are outdated in the United States and also outdated in different countries, running on very, very limited um, error issues. Like you cannot make a mistake, like having a ship stuck in the Suez Canal or the whole world's dis disrupted. You cannot have a... Uh, disease disrupt our food supply you know it's like it's that more and more tight and so we're going to have to be more effective globally and work together globally on our trade and supply chains so it does not end here the next decade is going to be critical in our sustainability our trade routes and our social welfare systems as the the world is changing dynamically and shifting so check out the world in 2050 i think you'll find it more fascinating and um, uh, yeah, surprised that this book approached certain things the way it did. So um, I also was a bit surprised in one case I found, a case study, they talked about third world countries that were at one time first rate countries. We say developing is a much better word. word. And you'll find that in some countries they were, they were more powerful than ours long before we ever existed, like China. So.